and hold to our heartache, healing out of every hurt that invades our shattered world. We never walk through trials in vain. We've known His mercy long enough to say. He's the Redeemer of the Sometimes I fail the Lord and the ones that I love the most. My prayer of confession goes up, but the winds that accuse me still blow. In the midst of the storms of guilt and regret, when I know I'm forgiven but don't feel it yet. I will cling to the cross, hold to that hill, trust in the truth that he forgives. 
here still It's my shelter from shame Though I can't explain How such gain can come from such loss I will cling to, cling to the cross You think my heart would run from this scene of disgrace and death but there's an attraction so strong to the suffering i'll never forget what the world may despise or see as defeat is the symbol of victory i'll never leave i will cling to the cross hold to that hill trust in the truth that he forgives still it's my shelter from shame though i can't explain how such gain can come from such loss i will cling to cling to the cross it's here i am covered by mercy and grace trophies at last I lay down I will sing I will sing I will cling to the cross hold to that hill trust in the truth that he forgives still it's my shelter from shame though I can't explain how such gain
Well, we're going to go ahead and get started here, and uh, just let me say uh, to all the family and friends that are here this evening, thank you so much on behalf of the family uh, for coming out tonight as we have this memorial service and uh, just uh, celebrating the life of Rob this evening. We're going to begin with a word of prayer, and uh, then we're going to sing uh, a couple of the songs that Rob uh, enjoyed singing in church, and uh, so I hope you'll join with us. The words will be on the screen when we sing, but let's pray together this evening. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can come tonight, and obviously, Lord, we understand, uh, Lord, though this is a memorial service, that at the same time, we, uh, we know that Rob is uh, not suffering anymore. Lord, we know that he is uh, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And Father, we thank you for that hope that we can have in Christ. And Father, we do pray that you would be uh, with the family. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with Anita, uh, the kids, uh, Lord, uh, relatives, uh, brothers and sisters, and all of those who are here today. Uh, God, I pray that you would just, uh, Lord, just bring comfort uh, to their hearts during this time, and uh, that we would just be able to uh, rejoice and uh, what you did through Rob's life, and uh, Lord, just continue to use his life uh, in days to come. And so, Father, I pray that you just bless uh, this evening. Lord, may you receive the honor and glory through all that is done. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're not going to have you stand or anything like that, but we, do, we would encourage you to sing along with us. One of the songs that Rob uh, enjoyed singing was the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And uh, so I'm going to have Brother Shane come and lead us in that song.
That's a great song. And what a comfort we can have that even though through something like this, it can still be well with our soul uh, because we know where he is at. Robert or Rob Curtis Raker, age 50 of West Alexandria, Ohio, passed away on June 4th, 2020 with his loving family by his side and went to meet his Lord. He was born in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania on March 1st, 1970 was the son of the late Joanne Dunning Martin. And on June 13th, 2009, at the St. John Church in West Alexandria, uh, Rob married Anita White and began raising a family together. Um, He worked as an ordained minister, and then, of course, a couple of years ago, came and joined our church here and had the privilege of of being Rob's pastor. And uh, I will say this, it's, it's odd being a pastor to a man that's been a pastor before. That's a little bit odd, but uh, we sure enjoy them. Rob is survived by his wife, Anita, uh, children, Jessica Raker, Timberland Donaldson, Alina and Nick Phillips, Miley Morris, uh, Donna Raker, Michael Raker, and Easton Raker, who I see has already lost the tie, right? He started with it. He looked sharp, man. He looked good. Siblings, Tammy Stoll, Melissa and Daryl Muser, and uh, Kelly and Pete Winchester and their families, his father, Curtis, and Sandy Raker, uh, his in-laws, Kenneth and Judy White, as well as several uh, grandchildren. And uh, we'll say more about Rob in just a few moments. Uh, We want to sing another one of the songs that he enjoyed singing, and a song that I hope uh, maybe many of you know, is that is, What a Day That Will Be When My Jesus I Shall See. And uh, Rob's already getting to see that, right? What a day, man. Uh, On that day that when he uh, had his last breath here, uh, but opened his eyes in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a day that must have been. And uh, one day we'll be able to do that as well if we know the Lord is our Savior. So Brother Shane, why don't you come and we'll sing that song as well. was quite a character. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, Rob was a very gracious and a very humble man, and uh, a man that had a heart of gold, and uh, had a heart uh, of love, uh, not only for the Lord, but uh, love for his family, and uh, for those that uh, were in his family and loved his church. Um, of course, if you know Rob, you also know that he loved football. And he was a diehard (laughs) (laughs) 
It's just hard to say those words. <laughs> In church, right? <laughs> uh, he was one of those people, right? <laughs> he was a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Yeah, there's still hope for some of you. <laughs> uh, we had a great time uh, just going back and forth uh, about his teams and things like that. And uh, just, again, just such a gracious, gracious and humble man. And uh, he, uh, he introduced me to fantasy football. I had never, uh, knew, I didn't know anything about fantasy football until a couple of years when Rob and Michael said, hey, we want to do a fantasy football league. And I'm thinking, I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> why, would I do, why would I do fantasy football? And they explained to me it was all on a computer. And I'm like, okay, I can, I can handle that. And uh, so they introduced me to fantasy football. And believe it or not, honest truth, I won. <laughs> I'd never heard of it before in the first year. I'm just picking guys randomly, you know, I'm like, and I won. And I, he, he presented me with this big old belt that showed me that I was the winner of the fantasy football league. I was like, woo. <laughs> Didn't happen the next year, though, <laughs> or the year after that. Uh, but it's, it's great to be able to remember many things about, about Rob and just what a great guy he was. I would like to take this opportunity, and if you would like to maybe say something about Rob, we have a mic uh, here, and the reason why we would ask you to use the mic is because we have many people who are watching via live stream as well, and uh, we want them to be able to hear uh, what you say, and uh, so we have a mic right here. If you'd like to uh, maybe come and say something, I know Miss Anita uh, wanted to say something as well, uh, but if you'd like to, we'll give you that opportunity. Miss Anita, would you like to start? I know I've gotten to say hi to probably most of you um, up close, but I just wanted to stand up. Hi. <laughs> Seeing fans' faces that I that came in, I didn't get to see. Um, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that it was a real privilege to be able to take care of Rob. And um, when we were getting to know each other um, 11 years ago, we. Um, one thing that when and we were talking was that we, or I felt that I, and I learned about him, that we, um, we both felt like that there was a purpose for marriage, not just, you know, you get married because you're married, but that there was a reason, and I didn't know what my specific reason was and what his specific reason was, honestly, when we first got married, but shortly after that, when our girls were entering their teenage years and we were all living through that and um, struggling at times and all. And it became very apparent to me, um, we were living in Tennessee at the time when, at this one particular time I'm thinking of, <clears throat> and I was terrified through my whole being and everything I think was shaking and I was just like, how can he sleep? How can, you know, whatever. But he, it became apparent, God had allowed me to marry Rob because he kept me, uh, whatever this means, <laughs> Balance, <laughs> and uh, yeah. what I can't think of the word, um, sane, I guess, but that might be questionable now, too, but <laughs> anyway, uh, but then as we, I probably was around 2012, I'm guessing, when he was diagnosed with the whole AFib thing, and that's when we learned about the heart, and his issue, and then we really started learning, and um, and it was very apparent once we learned that and, could, and learned that his, all of his body systems were very, had been very compromised because of how bad his heart had been for so long that we, don't, we didn't know about. And so then God made it really clear, well, this is why we've, you know, I, why he married me so I could take care of him and we could have a good time and make his days as, you know, as good as they could be. So, um, so I just wanted everybody to know that and that it, it, I have not had to struggle and take care of him or anything like that. I truly, I, it was nice to know what God wanted me to do and that that was my job. And um, so I tried to do it the best I could. And so um, 
Anyway, if you have something to share, please don't be afraid of a microphone. <laughs> and if you saw Rob and Anita together, you know they were crazy anyway, so. <laughs> yes. All right. Would anybody else like to maybe say anything this evening? Yes. All right. I'm Bob's dad. I got in, got two, three daughters and a with my son. When I first heard about it. He passed on. I thought I lost my boy. I come here today, and I see how you people have loved him and everything, and been there for his side through whatever he was. And I was always what a father always wishes that God is with his children Amen. when they are in their trouble. And I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Anita. I want to thank everybody for taking care of my son. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Anyone else like to say something? Don't feel shy. Anyone else? Yeah, BJ? I've known Anita for way longer than I ever knew Rob, but I've gotten to know them through their, their marriage and in the past 10 or so years, I suppose, got to know them even better. And then when my wife and I first attended this church, they were part of the reason we felt so really at home because we just felt their, felt their love and Rob had a real heart about him. I just knew that he, he, whenever he was around you, you knew that he was, he was in pain and he was struggling, but he had this huge heart that mm -hmm. somehow transcended all of that. You felt God's love moving through him and, and just the huge heart that the man had. It's really hard to put in words exactly what it was, but he, throughout his struggles and his pain, you knew that his, the joy was showing through Rob, and I think that's a great testimony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else? It's interesting to think that he had heart issues, but there was nothing wrong with his heart. He had a great heart. Yeah. Anyone else? TJ? Um, well, i known the Rager family for basically my entire life because <laughs> they did like this homeschool co-op thing. And it wasn't until they started coming to the church that I realized, like, how a tremendous um, testimony, like, the entire family had, like, even that's impacted my life in the few years that they've become to our church. Um, I've noticed, and everybody that looks at Rob can notice that he was in great pain, but he always had the biggest smile, and he was willing to serve God. Like, he would tell people that, like, Jesus loves you and that kind of stuff. Oh, no, I'm, I'm nervous right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is all on the spot, <laughs> but like, so when somebody who went through so much suffering in his last few years, he just had the biggest smile on his face, and the energy in the room, as soon as he walked in, would change. Like, he had the power to literally lighten up anybody's world that he came in contact with. And another thing that always lightened up the world was his cooking. Like, that man could cook. <laughs> like, if you thought a woman was a great cook, you have never met Rob. <laughs> Um, but just the entire testimony that the entire Raker family holds and even their extended family is just amazing. And if you didn't learn anything from Rob, just literally go to any of their family. He's, and the church, he's really changed, like, everyone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very good. Very good. You want us? Yes. Oh, Anita. I am Betty Lou. I am Curtis's, which was Bob's dad. I am his sister. And I am a former pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or felt. <laughs> when Bob came into the world, now, you got to understand, to me, he is Bobby. <laughs> My Bobby. And I babysat Bobby from, oh, he was just, 
well, from newborn up through a couple years at least. I want you to know, Bobby did not have to learn about Christ. Bobby did not have to learn that he was God's child. He did not have to learn to love others. He did not have to learn to get, uh, live according to God's laws. Bobby was born with Christ in his heart. He was a piece of Christ in my eyes. I never saw Bobby that he didn't have a smile on his face from the time he was a baby up until the day he died. I never come across Bobby that he was having an off day or he was in a foul mood. That just was all foreign to Bobby. Bobby lived as Christ would want us to live, or Christ does want us to live. And he did. He blessed everybody, everybody with his presence, just by being. And um, he will continue to bless each and every one if we allow it. If you look and you watch, you will see Bobby's presence in this world. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Else like Michael? Mm -hmm. As you know, I'm Rob's son, Michael. And my father was my best friend. We did everything together. And he never ever, he would never turn us away. He would always try to make a difference in our life, no matter what. And no matter, you know, even if he was in pain, you know, he would always voice it, that's for sure, but you know, he would always try to make the best of it, you know? And as Pastor said, Dad had a heart of gold and cared about each one, every person that came into our house. And every person that came in to the hospital room, he always cared about, you know, and he would share the Lord with everybody. And, you know, and mom always said, you know, sports is not everything. But, you know, for me and my dad, sports was everything. <laughs> I mean, and it was a part of everything. And, you know, I can't think of a Sunday where the first thing we did when we got home was we prayed and ate our food and we would always watch the Steelers game. <laughs> and you know, we always had that bond of watching sports or anything, anything. You know, he always, he always tried to make our lives as, make the best of everything. And he always just, you could feel like people have said, you could feel that he was in the room because he just had that spirit of joy. And, you know, he, he may have not always had the best of health, but he tried so hard just to include everybody and in everything. And he was just special. And my dad loved all of us, and everybody. And he always tried to encourage us for things of God. And, you know, of course, he was a musician. And he always tried, he always tried to, always tried to make a difference in people's lives. And that's what made Dad so special. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen.
Those are wise words. Very good words. Anyone else? Anyone else like to say anything? Ms. Lessa? I am blessed. Um, our whole family has been blessed by Anita and Rob. Um, we've actually only known them for a couple years through this church, and we just instantly fell in love with you guys. And um, it's just been such a privilege to know you and your family and your boys. And you can just tell what godly marriage you had and what godly people you are and your love for the Lord because it shines through you and it shines through your boys. And I just wanted to share the last memory that we had with Rob. Um, our families got to go out to dinner for Rob's birthday, and he was actually feeling pretty good that day. We got to see a little glimpse of Rob's personality and his spark for life as he hoisted Avenel up on the chair in the middle of the Chinese restaurant and danced with her <laughs> to, the, to the music that was playing. And that, that's a memory that I'm going to hold for just his love and zest for life and, and love for our family. That's wonderful. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Chris? I know Ariel's watching at home, and she wouldn't want me to come up here and say something <laughs> since he did call her his other granddaughter. Um, they were the main reasons that we started coming to this church a couple of years back. Um, one of the first people that we saw whenever we came in was Anita. And um, Ariel was just drawn to her and, and then we met Rob. And he had such uh, charisma to him. Uh, I, I never met anybody that didn't have anything, that didn't have anything good to say about him. Um, he was great at holding a hymnal. An inside joke between me and, uh, between me and Anita. Uh, he used to hold the hymnal in front of me while I was sitting there. So I didn't have to hold it. I could just read it over his shoulder. <laughs> um, one, of the, uh, one of the first memories I remember having with them was, and I, did we play dominoes at your house one time? That stinking chicken foot game? Oh, that is the worst game ever. I can't even, I've never hated dominoes so much. Um, that was one of the first memories that I have over at their house, and um, I know, you know, every time that y'all called because you needed help over at the house, we were always happy to come and help. Mm -hmm. um, coming over and having with Michael's uh, last birthday party, being over there was great too, and uh, we love you, and, and uh, glad to know him and to be friends with him. Amen. You forgot something? I should have known. I should have known. Michael, Michael's never done, right? He's always got something. I know. I just spoke, but this really just, it's really hard losing a dad. And one of the, one of the fondest memories I had was sitting in our living room, and Brian Nels could testify to this, we would be sitting in our living room playing the PlayStation, playing Madden, okay? And he'd be sitting there, and he, I, would, I would know the play he was about to call, and he would always hate it, but somehow, he would always win. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and <laughs> Dad was just one of those people that, you can never say he was never fun. You know, I mean, he always made life interesting. <laughs> and, you know, and also, I, I remember we, we would sit at home, and we would sit at home, 
and he would, he would, <laughs> we would, he would always ask, he would always say, never, never forget that I love you. And he would always be there to talk at any time, you know, and he, and Easton would, he would go up, he would go up and dad would always, he would always go up and say, um, daddy would always say hi, Tater or something, and he would always, you know, Easton at two will always remember dad. And that's how much dad impacted people that nobody could ever forget you know, what dad, what, who dad was. And that's why it's very hard for me right now. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else like to say anything? As you can see, Rob was just a special guy. Um, no doubt about it. Just a very special guy. May I say that it is, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry. No doubt when uh, you remember many of these fond memories and things, it will bring tears to your eyes and you'll miss those, those times. But it's all right. It's okay to grieve. In John chapter 11, after a dear friend of Jesus had died, we not only find the family and friends weeping, but we also have two very, very precious words. Jesus wept. And I think if it was all right for Jesus to weep, it's okay for us to weep as well. We will have sorrow, no doubt about it. But at the same time, as there will be tears and sorrow, there will also be joy. Um, there's joy in being able to know uh, that Rob's not suffering anymore. He's not in any of that pain. Uh, there's hope. Even through grief, there is hope because we know if we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, one day we'll be able to see Rob again. I remember a, an old, old preacher he used to say this, and he said, you haven't lost anything when you know where it is. We haven't lost Rob. We know exactly where he's at. He's in the presence of the Lord. And one day, we can look forward to being with him and seeing him again. Just briefly tonight, I want to give you some encouragement through the Word of God, that we can have hope through grief. You know, there's many things that the Bible tells us, and the Word of God is such an important book because it answers the questions to life. It has all of the answers that we need if we'll just go to the book and look and see what God says. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week or next month or next year. I don't think anybody last year would have expected what happened this year. <laughs> Nobody knew that. God did. It didn't take God by surprise. It didn't take God by surprise when Rob was diagnosed with many of these difficulties that he had. It didn't take God by surprise. It won't take God by surprise what happens in the future. And so that's why it's so important that we go to the Word of God to find out the answers. We can give our opinions, we can give what we think, but God gives truth. And that's what we have to base our life off of is truth. What does the Word of God say? You know, some things that we know God says is, first of all, that life is short. Life is short. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 9, it says, It is appointed unto men once to die. Right? Every one of us is going to die. James says our life is but a vapor. Right? It appeareth for a moment and then vanisheth away. It's just a short amount of time. Whether it would be 50 years or whether it would be 100 years, 
When you compare that amount of time to eternity, it really is just a vapor. It's just a short amount of time. God says it is appointed unto men once to die, and every one of us will at one point face death, have loved ones who go on before us. It's part of life. Because we are all fallen sinners. We have all have a sin nature. There's a certainty of death. In Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. Death is simply the payment, God says, for our sin. Because the Bible says that all have sinned. In Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we think about what's going on in our society, and many times people ask me questions, why is this happening? When we were missionaries in Africa, why, why is there famines? Why is there starvation? Why, is, why are there earthquakes? Why are, all these, why, do, why are all these things happening in the world? When we look at what's happening in, in the world, not just here in America, but all around the world, whether it's catastrophes or whatever it might be, it's all a result of our sin our sinful condition. Because when God placed Adam and Eve in the garden, God put Adam and Eve there and they were created not to die. There was no death at that time. But when God put them in the Garden of Eden, God said, of all the trees of the Garden of Eden, you can freely eat but one. He said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're not to eat of that tree. And here is Adam and Eve who are created innocent. They're created without sin. God gives them one command. Don't eat of this one tree. And of course, if you know the Word of God, the Bible tells us that Satan in the form of a serpent came and deceived Eve and caused her to eat of that tree. And God had told them that the day that you eat of that tree, thou shalt surely die. God said there would be a consequence for their disobedience. That consequence would be death. Now, obviously we understand Adam and Eve did not physically die that day. In fact, the Bible tells us that they lived and had children after that. So we know they didn't physically die that day. But we also know that God's word is true. And when God says that they were going to die the day that they ate of that tree, then we know that that happened. But if it wasn't a physical death, what kind of a death was it? Well, the word death simply means separation. A separation. When we think of someone dying, we think that their body has died, but yet we are created in three parts. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Our body is dead, but our spirit and our soul still remain alive. That's why we know where Rob is today. We know his body may be here on this earth, but we know his spirit and his soul are in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. His body is just separated from his spirit and his soul. It's when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, they died spiritually. They were spiritually separated from God. They could not be with God anymore, and so God had to kill an innocent animal and take the skin of that animal and cover their nakedness and to cover their sin. God said that He promised in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15 that He would send a deliverer. He would send someone who could forgive and take away our sin because animals cannot take away our sins. God promised in the very, very beginning that He would send someone to take away our sin. And that someone was His very own Son, Jesus Christ. There's a certainty of death because of our sin. Because of our sin, we have come short of the glory of God. We cannot just come to God any way we choose. And I know many religions try to say just whatever you want, you can get to God however you choose. But God says that's not true because there is a need for a Savior. We need a Savior. We need someone to save us from our sins. And that's why he says that we have come short of the glory of God. But then he tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, but God commendeth his love toward us. You know, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I tell you, we think of the words of Michael here. 
the love that he had for his dad, the love that Rob had for Michael. Many, as Michael was speaking of that, our hearts breaking, tears coming to our eyes. Can I tell you something this evening? That love that we heard spoke about tonight cannot compare to the love that God has for you and for me. God loved you and I so much that even though we sinned against God, God showed His love in sending His Son to die for us. Can you imagine the love that God has? Not requiring us to pay for our own sin, but sending His Son to die for us and showing His love that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. There is no greater love than the love that God has for you and I. It would be very easy for God just to simply say, look, you ran away from me, you figure it out. But God understands there is no way for us to figure out. We cannot come to God. We fall short of the glory of God. Oh, but I'm so very thankful for what he says at the end of verse number 23 of Romans chapter 6, that even though the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Not through a church, not through baptism, not through good works, but through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is one way to God. In fact, Jesus himself says it. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You say, how do you know where Rob is? Isn't that just your opinion? Can't, isn't that just you thinking and wishful thinking that you want to think that Rob is in heaven? No. Because according to Rob's testimony, he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. There was a day that he recognized that he was a sinner, and that he needed Jesus Christ to save him from his sin. Just like every one of us need. No matter how good we try to be, we can never be good enough. Think about it. Adam and Eve, innocent, <laughs> and they couldn't even keep one law. Yet we think somehow we can try to keep ten or more in a sinful condition. And yet God says there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. You see, there is the hope of heaven when we know Christ as our Savior. In fact, Jesus said in John chapter 14, in verse number 1, He says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in Me. For in My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said, let me tell you something. I'm going to go away, and I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to receive you and take you back to be with me. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. How, how, do, we, how do we get there? It sounds great, Lord, but how do we get there? We don't, we don't know the way. It sounds great to be able to go to heaven. It sounds great to have your sins forgiven. It sounds great to know that when we die, when we'll be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how do we get there? How do we know the way? Thomas, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Can I tell you this? There's one thing that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's no doubt in my mind. I can say this with absolute 100% certainty tonight. If you're here this evening, or maybe you're watching the, the service via live stream, 
If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I guarantee you Rob would plead with you. Rob would plead with you to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Because that is the hope that we have. The hope that we have is not in a religion, it's not in a church, it's not in our works. The hope that we have is in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, we would love to take the Word of God and show you how you can have the same confidence that Rob had. That as he would be in those hospital rooms and in so much pain, that he could still look at those nurses and doctors and ask them, do you know for sure where you would go when you would die? Do you know the Lord is your Savior? And here's a man that the doctors who are supposed to have all the answers are trying to help, and yet here he's trying to help them. Because he was trying to help them with something far greater than just physical health. He wanted them to know for sure where they would go when they die. My friend, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible says you can know for sure that heaven is your home. And I would be very happy to take the Word of God and show you verses that Rob knew, verses that Michael can quote, and show you how you can know for sure that heaven is your home. To be able to see and have that confidence to know that one day we'll be again. We'll be with him again in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will there be tears and sorrow? Yes. I encourage you, pray for the family. Pray for them. Pray for Michael. Pray for Anita. Pray for the family. Pray for his parents. Pray for her parents. Pray for the brothers and sisters. Pray for the children. They're going to need the grace of God. It's going to be tough. God's grace is sufficient. When we think about Rob, I hope and I pray that if you know Christ as your Savior, you'll think one day we'll meet again. And although I know he loved football and sports, one day all those things won't matter anymore. One day your job won't matter anymore. One day your health won't matter anymore. Your finances, your retirement won't matter anymore. The only thing that will matter is if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you from your sin. To know for sure that heaven is your home. And we pray together tonight. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for the testimony of a man by the name of Robert Raker. Lord, what a privilege it was to be able to know him. Lord, I know many times we speak as if it's past tense. Lord, we know where he is. We know he is kicking up some heels, walking the streets of gold and enjoying the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. No more pain, no more suffering. And Father, I pray that you would be with the family in these next days and weeks and months ahead. You would just bring comfort to their hearts. Lord, you would give them that special grace that only you can give. Father, I pray for family and friends that might be here today. Lord, that they may not know Christ as their Savior. I pray today they would be willing to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, not in a religion, not in a church, not in a man, but in Jesus Christ, the Son of God to know that their sins are forgiven, to know that there is hope in heaven through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would bless now 
even tomorrow at the graveside, I pray that you would bless and you'd bring comfort to the family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Again, I do want to remind you that tomorrow there will be a graveside service. I believe that's at 11 o'clock at the cemetery there in West Alexandria. And I know you'll be welcome to come for that as well. All right. Ms. Anita, would you like to say anything as people are leaving? No? No? Yes, um, I, I failed to mention that. I apologize. Yes, uh, one of the things that Rob wanted uh, to people do in lieu of flowers and, and gifts and things like this, one of, one of the ministries of our church is what is called the American Gospel Project, and that was something that Rob just loved. And we started this last year putting together the Word of God and trying to mail it out through homes throughout the different counties around us and uh, just trying to get the Word of God into people's homes. And uh, Rob asked that any, uh, any gifts or anything like that, donations would be made to the American Gospel Project. Uh, there are some envelopes in the back there, and that just helps with getting the Word of God out into people's homes so they can know the same message that you've heard tonight about Jesus Christ and how they can have that same hope that he had. And uh, so there are envelopes in the back if you'd like to take one and make a donation to it. The address and everything is already on there for that. All right. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. All right. Well, thank you so much. I do hope that you'll be able to spend some time with a family if you've not been able to yet, and uh, just let them know how much you love them, appreciate them. All right, God bless you, and you are dismissed.